everyone. Today we're going to talk about probiotics and a wonderful thing that you can make. It's going to take you probably like 15-20 minutes, but you can make them. I make probably about five of them at a time. And they will give you different probiotic activity every three days. So probiotics help you to have good gut health. And a lot of times what happens is, is our good gut bacteria gets destroyed and it's overpowered by the bad gut bacteria, which gives us a lot of digestive issues, brain issues, and immune system issues. So we need to make sure that you're putting in good foods to eat in order to help you heal yourself naturally. Now, you can take probiotics. Last video we talked about prebiotics, how that sets the stage for the probiotic to come in and help you to create good gut bacteria, but getting stuff from your foods as well and then having supplementation is the way to go. So I'm gonna go over sauerkraut with you. Now, very easy to make and you can actually determine how you want your kraut to taste. So the first thing that you're going to do, we're gonna do this in stages, you're going to take your cabbage. I use green cabbage. I like it better than the red for a sauerkraut, but you could do whatever you want. And you're going to take the outer leaves off. And then what you're going to do is you'll cut it in half and you'll take the core out. Rinse these off because you are going to use these later on. And spray them. In a previous video, we talked about the natural cleaner for your produce cleaner, so you could spray it with that and then set it aside. You'll cut this in half and then you'll slice the cabbage. So you're gonna get a big thing like this, okay? And then what you're going to do is transfer the cabbage into a big pot. And you're going to sprinkle several tablespoons, start with two per cabbage, of either uh, sea salt or Himalayan salt. You don't wanna use iodized, use either a sea or a Himalayan. And then you mix it. Okay, and then what I do is I set it aside for about 15 minutes because I want the salt to work in and start breaking down the cabbage wall so it will start to sweat. Otherwise, I'm going to be squeezing this cabbage forever and who has time for that? So you leave it and then you'll see after 15 minutes, it's going to get watery. Then what you're going to do is you're gonna squeeze the cabbage and you're going to keep squeezing it to break the cell walls down and you'll push it down. And as you're pushing it down, you're going to see water rising up. And the goal is, is that we break down this cabbage so much that when we press down, the water comes up over the cabbage. So that's what you're going to do. And then we'll go to the next step. Okay, now I have squeezed the cabbage and what it kind of looks like is a, um, like a wilted salad consistency and down at the bottom there's a, there's a bunch of water, okay? Um, I have little kid hands. This took me probably about, I don't know, eight to 10 minutes to do. Um, so, you know, if you have larger, more powerful hands, it's not gonna take you as long, but that's like the worst part of it. Now. You can leave your kraut just like this, and don't be afraid of using salt, okay? The salt, it, it, you want it to penetrate in so that it will break down these cell walls, okay? And you know, it's not gonna be really salty once the kraut ferments, so don't be afraid of that. Now, I love to put other things in my kraut, so I use ginger, so I just took like a little bit of ginger, um, maybe like a teaspoonful, you can use a ginger powder too. And I throw that in because ginger is anti-inflammatory. So I love doing that. I'll put about a clove of garlic in it. Um, so I just chop up some garlic and then I have some extra of the shallots from uh, when I did the prebiotic video, last video. So I just throw in like a little handful of that, maybe about two tablespoons of that. And then I love beets. Beets are wonderful for you. They're great to help your liver along thing and you know, great for just healing properties all around. Beets are wonderful. So I throw in like a half a beet in there and then I mix all that up too. And it makes the kraut really pretty too when it's done fermenting. It comes out to be like a pink, okay? And so then I mix all that in, more the merrier.
area. I am just giving you a baseline so that you can be creative in your cooking. My whole goal in doing these videos is to show you that being healthy does not have to be difficult. You can make your own things and they don't take a lot of time. And you can do a lot of things at once, like I'm gonna do with this kraut, and you'll have it for a long time. So, you get your containers. I always save my jars. I use my old nut butter jars and stuff like that. And you just throw this in and you fill it up. And as you're filling it up, what you wanna do is punch it down. And as you punch it down, you're gonna see water coming up. And that's what we want. We want the water, you wanna compact it, and you want the water to come above the crowd. Okay, I wanna do a close up of this. So I filled the jar, but I wanna show you how the liquid should be at the top. So when I press down, you could see that the juice is coming to the top. And that's what we want. Years ago, I could not figure out how to do my crowd, it would get moldy. So I went to a presentation by Sandor Katz, who is an amazing fermenter. He wrote the book, The Art of Fermentation. And my whole problem was, is that I wasn't adding enough salt to break down the cell walls to create enough liquid. And we need this liquid at the top, okay? So then what we wanna do, so there's a little left in there and I'm gonna make some more anyway. So I'm just gonna pour some more water at the top of it. And then I told you to save this little part of the inside of the cabbage and you cut it into a little square. And then what you do is you take the outer cabbage leaf that you cleaned with the natural produce wash and you go and you just fold it in there because you wanna make a plug. So we wanna keep that water down over the cabbage. We don't care if it goes all into the plug, although it will, but we want no mold, okay? And then you just seal this. Now, you need to put this in your sink or if you have like a plastic container or something or a piece of Tupperware, put this in it because it will leak because this is going to ferment. So you're going to leave this in. Within 24 hours, you are going to loosen the lid. It's called burping it. You'll hear the gas, leave the container, and then if you tighten it up again, okay? Every three days, this creates new probiotic activity with fermentation. So every three days, you can open this and taste it. So you'll get different probiotics every third day. And that's one of the things that I had learned from Sandor Katz. Now, when you get to the point where your kraut is tangy for you, you like the taste of it, that's when you wanna put it into your refrigerator. So I've done it as early as one week and then I've also done it three months out. So it just depends on what you like. As time goes on, your taste buds will change for it and uh, you might like a more tangier type of kraut. But I always try and have something at least every three days. So I have a whole bunch of them I make at once. I usually do three heads of cabbage at once and then I will have different probiotic activity every few days when I do that. You can also put carrots in it you, with the cabbage. You can be creative with it. So this is the foundation that I have provided for you. Probiotics are wonderful. You need to make sure you get good probiotic activity in. Remember the prebiotics help the probiotics, which will help the good gut bacteria. Have fun with it, enjoy yourself. Remember health is a choice, choose to be alive and well. If you're watching this on our website and haven't subscribed yet, subscribe to the blog. If you're watching it on YouTube, subscribe to the channel. Have a great day.